Welcome to Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Tim Scallon, registered dietitian. And I'm Manuel Marini, executive chef. You know, these days, Chef Manny, a lot of people are looking for ways to cut back. And what better way to do it than to cook more at home? Well, especially starting the New Year's. Yeah. So yeah. this is great. And so here on Memorial Cooking Innovations, we can learn some basic cooking skills. And it's amazing how many delicious dishes you can put together with just a few skills. Definitely. In fact, on this show, a little bit later, you're going to show us how to keep our knives sharp. And that's important yeah. you know, for uh, safety purposes and just to have fun and keep a nice sharp knife. So what, uh, what, what are we cooking today, So Chef this Manny? is one of those days where we're going to actually start with the dessert. Okay. And then finish with the entree. Okay. And because we're doing, I like starting with dessert. It's fun. Okay. And because we're gonna by the time we finish the entree, the dessert will be ready. Okay. We're and gonna this, have to chill it a little bit. This dessert isn't gonna make me gain weight, is it? No, it's actually a nice lemon cream pie. What do you think about Ooh, that? Ooh, and, I, so and that's on a healthy diet. On a healthy diet. Okay. okay. So trust me, you told me. Make sure we break <laughs> it down. So we did. Our ingredient is gonna be a little bit, a little sugar. Okay. Some uh, egg yolks. Yep. Uh, a little fresh squeezed lemon juice, a little food coloring just to make it nice yellowish, and uh, it's a little margarine, Ooh, a little Splenda, okay. and that's basically it. So All right. okay. if you want to get started, we'll do that. Okay, let's do. The recipe calls for two eggs. What we want to do is we want to keep it at room temperature. What I did was I took the egg whites out and just kept the yolk, so we're going to go ahead and actually okay. mix it really good, okay? Okay. So you don't mind keeping that? Yeah. And so we've discarded the, the egg whites. And, and we just have our egg yolks, okay. Right. It calls for one cup of water. So okay. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, get, this thing is a little hot. So we're going to bring that water to a uh, simmer. Okay. We have to add some cornstarch and that's gonna help us thicken it up a little bit, okay? You know, last show we talked about using cornstarch as a thickener when you were making that sauce for the, the pork loin, remember that? Yeah, and, so and that you, worked good, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, so you used uh, cornstarch as a thickener to thicken the sauce up. Well, this is the same thing. You're using cornstarch to thicken a pie filling, only you're gonna use more because you want the pie filling to be thicker. Exactly. Okay. So now we're gonna dissolve the sugar. Okay. We're gonna add the cornstarch, the sugar, and then again, it's cold water. We're gonna bring it up to a boil real quick, okay? Okay. And it calls for like six tablespoons. Mm -hmm. I'm using a little teaspoon, so this is the measurements of it, okay? Okay, and you got your Splenda in and there? And I got my Splenda. Okay. I think this calls for uh, six of those. No, three, three. sorry. Three. three. So I got three, three of them. We're gonna go ahead and mix this all together and dilute it. And as it comes up to a boil. And then this is the part that I like. I always like to do the whisking. There you so go. Make sure it mixes this really good. Yeah. And you know, with cornstarch, once you, st what you ideally what you do is you kind of whisk it into that liquid so that, because once you start adding that heat, it starts uh, it goes. thickening. It thickening up real fast. Okay. Okay. And so, then I mean, last time we talked about also cornstarch, it's Cold water and cornstarch, add it to hot. Never add hot to hot. Yeah. It's, it's got to be one or the other. Because if you put that cornstarch in hot water, it's going to get thick on you Real so fast. fast. Yeah. Okay. So let it simmer for a little bit, Tim. Okay. And then on All this right. one, we're going to squeeze the lemon. Okay, so that one's here. And I got a little lemon zester here. that we The recipe calls for a little lemon zest. So yep. we're going to go ahead and do But this is something that we're going to add at the last minute. Okay, Tim? Okay. So we have your eggs. Why don't you go ahead and... Put your eggs in the, in this one. Go ahead and put your eggs in this one, because we're gonna what we're gonna do is grab a little bit of this, add it to this, and then bring it back in here. And I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. So let's add the eggs. Beautiful. Okay. What I'm gonna do here is I am going to squeeze this lemon juice. Okay. Okay. And the reason Tim I asked you to put the eggs there is because the recipe says for us to go ahead and put a quarter of a cup of hot to into cold, the eggs. but stirring constantly. Then we'll grind it, we're gonna actually flip it over, put the eggs in, back in there. And that way, it that wasn't, way it we, won't don't, love, we, we don't, don't we have don't scrambled eggs. Yeah, we don't coagulate so you, eggs. So if you don't mind grabbing that, okay. as I squeeze these lemons. Okay, I'm gonna come right around Go you ahead. here. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of this hot mixture and mix it in. Yeah, but make sure you have your whip because it oh, will. I got a whisk got, as yeah, I'm doing got, this. That's yes. right. Okay. It's pretty All simple. Right. Okay. And so. Because this is so hot. Let me show you, Tim. Okay. When we do that, just go ahead and keep whisking. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. You got to do it. Keep going. Keep going. Don't yep. stop because yep. it will be, become scrambled eggs. 
There you go. See? And nice nobody and wants scrambled eggs in their lemon pie. You know, it just... See? So it, uh, it, the reason for this is we're heating up the eggs. Yes. Now we're going to add this. It's warm back here and start stirring it up. And, and we want to we want to go ahead and cook this for a little while. I think our recipe says three minutes because yes. you don't you also don't want raw egg yolks in your lemon pie. Okay, okay. while you're doing that, what I'm doing is I'm, I think we made a successful transition here. And it's and that and that's the whole purpose of it. See how it thickened it up? Mm -hmm. Okay, Beautiful. good. What I'm doing is I'm getting a little lemon zest. Okay. Hate and them. I can smell that lemon. That's great. You know, the flavor is all in the peeling. Well, not all of it, but there's a lot of flavor uh, elements in the peel of the lemon. Okay. Beautiful. All and right. then I do have a little, you don't always, you don't have to, but we do have a little um, a food coloring. If okay. you don't mind adding a three drops or so. Okay, about three drops. About three drops. Them. We don't want it too, but it's okay if we add a little too much. Okay. It's just going to be a little more yellowish. Okay. All right. And then I got some margarine. Kind of cooled okay. off a little bit. But it calls for some margarine. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this. Yeah, that's enough, Chef Manny, because you know, you don't want your dietitians getting nervous when you keep adding all those margarines in there. So now that we have this, okay, okay, if you don't mind stirring, I'm going to go okay. ahead and drop this in there. I'm just keeping it And if you're eye. working by yourself, then just put a little in there and whisk it in. And then put a little bit more and whisk it all in. Just keep stirring is the main thing. That's the main thing. You're just keeping those lemon seeds out as yep. you're pouring it in. One thing that's important is the first thing you do is when you squeeze the lemon, pull the seeds out. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to counting how many I have to make sure yeah. I'm, <laughs> how many are left. You know what I mean? You don't so, want one to end up in the pie. No. Okay. But if right. it did, then I would know that there's one in there. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Right. That looks great, good. huh? Okay. So we got I think some... our eggs are cooked now. Yeah. That looks good. Okay. So now we got some uh, graham cracker crust that we buy at the store, or you can make your own. Okay. okay. We'll just pour that, that in, go there. in there. Yeah. We're ready. There you go. Okay. All right. And we'll refrigerate. Okay. So while we're doing this, is cooling down. It'll thicken up. Okay. Okay. Beautiful, Tim. In, in See, this, it came out really so simple. Yeah, yeah. In this dish, what we did is, is we, in the traditional recipe, we had a pie crust. Well, pie crust is real high in shortening, which is high in saturated fat and trans fat, all that stuff that clogs our blood vessels. I'm going to put this one in the refrigerator, okay? Tim? Okay. And so we used a graham cracker crust instead. And the other change that we made was, is we used a non-fat, sugar-free whipped topping uh, to top this pie with. Now you can use that in all kinds of desserts. It's non-fat, it's sugar-free, so you can top puddings with it. You can, you, any, any place where you would want whipped cream. And the good, thing about, the good thing about it, it's available yeah, just anywhere. Yeah. So, and so you can still have a great dessert, mm -hmm. healthier. That's right. Chef Manny, you're not gonna believe what my daughter Claire gave me for Christmas. Uh, you know, you know, Claire lives in Austin's teacher there, and she gave me a knife sharpener. And that's a nice one. You know, she knows we do the show. She watches it, and so, uh, of course, you know, I've told you about this before we taped this show, guys. And so I, I wanted to make sure that uh, I knew how to use this, and Chef Manny showed me how to use a sharpener. So we thought we should show you guys how to yeah. sharpen and with it, a sharpener. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about in the past was you have to have a nice, sharp knife. The knife won't cut you, you'll cut, you're going to cut yourself. So. And I am so tired of all these dull knives in my house. Yeah, and one, of the, and one of the things about a knife, one thing that we have to keep, this is the old traditional one, a nice stone. Okay. Now there's a, lots of different stones. Okay. Um, but this is, when you buy a stone like that, you could do it one way or another. One is to use oil or use water, whichever one. You can't okay. use both. Okay. So you make, you make that decision. Me personally, Tim, I prefer... Uh, water on my stone. Okay. And then we'll talk about it uh, as we go. And I notice you have a coarse side to this and you have a That's fine, fine side. side. So show us how you would use a stone and then we're going to use this one. Exactly. Okay. First of all, we want to add a nice rag, nice yep. wet, make, yep. it, make sure the stone stays stiff. It sticks to the counter. Okay. okay. That's good. One tip. thing, a lot of thing, a lot of time people think that if I went backwards, is, you know, do, do this, do that. Okay. It might work. Me personally, I like to go a Against it. So you're going right. at a 45 angle, okay. a 45 degree angle. The hope the viewers can see. Go at a 45 angle okay. and don't come back at it. But I'm gonna go against it. 
Okay. All right. And turn it and turn against it. it. Okay. And against it. Just so like that. So you're always going toward the blade. Toward the blade. Okay. And always keep the same angle, okay? Again, put and your put your three fingers here and just pay attention to what you're doing. Nice and just slow. Just go slowly. Start from the end and up in the front. And you know, Chef Manny, I see some people, or I've heard them talk about doing this with the knife. Tell me about what you think about well, that. The, going like this is not a good idea, and let me tell okay. you why it's not okay. a good idea. The more we sharpen it like this, is the more we wear out the knife. The knife, it's it's very important that we keep the knife nice and, and smooth and the, evenly. So you want to kind of swing your knife. A lot of times, if we go like this, we're going to make a little loop over it. So every time you're cutting, you will never reach the bottom of the board. And, and you know, you've kind of taught us to cut like this. And so see I see what you're talking about. It's, it's, it's a rocking motion. Exactly. And so you want to keep that, that circle on the blade. It's smooth. So we'll, okay. let's say, for instance, we'd go back and forth just like this, okay? Okay. And it takes a lot of experience. Take your time. Okay. There's no hurry, you know? Okay. And I want you to try this, Tim. Okay. And then we'll flip the knife, the, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the stone, stone, and do it the same way. Just do it about four or five times, okay, Tim? And then keep it nice. Now, when we do this, well, one, I want you to try it, Tim. And like okay. I said, please take your time. If you're left-handed, same way. Okay. Nothing changes. All right. And so this way. Exactly. And then. No, nope. Come back from over there toward you. This way. There you go. Okay. See? So this way. I'm glad you're showing me how to do this because I'm going to go home and, and uh, do it. Yeah, and it takes a little practice, so okay. don't, you know, and never try to stand in one area. And, and another thing I want to show you, Tim, okay. is that you, just like when you when you talked about people sharpening their yeah. tool like yeah. this, okay, if we start here and finish here, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is we're going to wear this part, but not yeah. this part. So oh, ma I always make sure a you full, finish it. A full. Full. Okay. full. So always at the end. Okay. Okay. All right. Same thing on that side. But let's talk about yours. Yeah. Let me move this. Which this is really a nice one. Okay. And then there's also other ones. We have this one available okay, at the stores also. It's okay. the same kind. Yours has a double blade. Yours right. has a cords and a fine. Okay. Okay. What I want everyone to know is when you use these tools, either or, again, all, safety first. Mm -hmm. Always start at the back and work your way out. Never start here because, again, we're wearing out the blade you unevenly. Wanna, you want to sharpen so the whole So you want to start from the back and work your way up. Okay. Okay? All right. Don't go from here up. Okay. Start from the back and work your way up. Okay. Now, by using this, it will mm -hmm. give it a nice, sharp, you know, uh, okay. thing to it. But one thing is important, we got to make sure we wash it. Okay, and so the reason you're washing it is because as you've pulled this knife through these blades in the sharpener, there are metal filings. In fact, you can even see a few of those filings here. Uh, and you'll have those on the blade too, so you want to wash, you wanna wash wipe it. wipe those off. Another one would be to keep your knife sharp mm -hmm. would be to use a steel. A lot, okay. of, a lot of places, this is one way to do it. Again, start from the back, end up in the front. Now, you're, you're, you're saying something, and I want to make sure everybody's understanding because we've talked about this. Uh, first, we're going to use a sharpener to, to create the edge, and then this is going to be lining up the, the microscopic jagged edge exactly. on that blade. Is that correct? Exactly. That's correct. And also, this you would use this a lot more than you would use this. Once we take the blade, if every time we were to use the knife and mm -hmm. we just do this simple, it just... So, nice so, so this is just kind of fine tuning is what That's this it. is doing, and, and you do this more frequently. You more might frequently. sharpen this uh, depending yeah, on how often you use your knife out. Yeah, you don't want to do that all the you time. You don't, you know, yeah. unless it's you know really needs serious unless uh, it's real dull. sharpening. Yeah. yeah. So this is one way of doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Another way to do it if you don't feel and, and this protects you by the way. Yeah. So, you know, make sure like I said, make sure you start from the end and work your way up. Okay. Another way to do it. It's always away from everybody. Just yeah. go one way and do it away okay. from you, okay? Okay. So if all that right. makes you feel more secure, then go by, by all means do this. Okay. And all that's right. pretty good. And that's how we keep our knives sharp. So there are a lot of good gadgets out there that can help you keep your knife sharp. All and right. a good knife sharp makes it fun in the kitchen. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do our uh, main dish salad that we've, we've planned. The good thing about this entree is that we're going to use the marinade and save half for a dressing. Okay, so you're actually combining two steps into one. You're going you're gonna to create a marinade that's also going to be your dressing? Exactly. Okay, and this dish is called Chicken Linguine Florentine Salad. What we're going to do is uh, I pre-cooked the linguine al dente, which yep. means that you want it to be kind of crispy, but not too hard, not so too soft, not overcooked. So firm, al dente, firm, firm. to the bite. To the bite. Okay. Okay, and then uh, the recipe is going to call for a little balsamic vinegar. Now, okay. 
not all of us have balsamic vinegar. We could mm -hmm. use a little bit of red wine vinegar. Yeah. Or any other vinegar that you have at the house. But would you be know a good the one. but the vinegar in this recipe is one of those elements that brings flavor, flavor to the dish. Because it's a raspberry type vinegar. Mm -hmm. It's an Italian vinegar. So mm -hmm. a little black olives, a little feta cheese. Now we yep. talked about the feta cheese and, and the, the sodium yep. and the olives. Yep. So yep. you know we have to break it down for nutritional information. And these items actually contribute a lot of flavor, but because they're high in sodium, we use small amounts. Right. And so basically this is a good example of how eating healthy doesn't mean just doing without. Eating healthy is also about balance. So, okay, and so you got your, your so olives got and cheese. I got a little olive oil. Now we, let's talk about nuts. The okay. recipe calls for walnuts. Yes. Recently, we had a recall on walnuts, yes. so we're not going to use this in the store. But you, your, you know, the salad you could use pecans, walnuts, yeah. cashews, whatever nut. Um, it's your preference. And, so. and it may be a nut that you have uh, left home. over from Christmas, uh, but today preferably we're gonna do unsalted. Almonds. Yeah. Okay. Today so we're going to do almonds. Okay. A little bit of garlic, a little olive oil, a pinch of salt and pepper. That's it. Okay. All, All right. right. So. What we're going to do is we're going to add the garlic. Okay, so we're starting with the marinade dressing. Marinade okay. dressing, uh-huh. Okay. We're going to add the garlic. All right. Now, for those that are um, not too familiar with balsamic vinegar, mm -hmm. it is a nice, it's got a nice aroma. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of that because we don't okay. want too much. Yep. We're going to add a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And you know, uh, olive oil again, it's a healthy oil, and if it's ex extra virgin, it's adding. Then I'll put a little bit here for our chicken. Okay, adding flavor to the dish. We are going to add a little bit of lemon juice. Yep, fresh lemon juice. And so if we're reducing, you know, limiting those high sodium uh, items, we want to bring out flavor in healthy things. So lim fresh lemon juice, not the bottled stuff, is a good place to do that. Mm -hmm. Fresh garlic. Fresh is always best. Mm -hmm. Fre fresh thyme. Now, this time of year, you may not have fresh thyme. Did you get that this I, time of year? This time of, of the year, year I got that. That's okay. very good. Uh, Man. And, uh, and so if you're going to use uh, dry instead of fresh. I got fresh. Okay. But for those who don't, if they, if they don't have fresh. Yeah, and, you know, t dry is not bad at all. Mm -hmm. all right? Especially so, in this. In this, yes. And, but if you're going to use dry, use half as much. Because remember, dried herbs are uh, twice as strong flavor-wise as the fresh. And so you're cutting those nice I'm cutting and those real, real good. Let me just bring this over a little closer to Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Okay. We're going to add a little fresh thyme and a little fresh parsley. Okay. Ooh, I smell that thyme. It's just wonderful. You know, if you come to the live Memorial Cooking Innovations, we do that the third Thursday of every month here at Memorial Hospital. You get to smell these aromas. Uh, it's, a, it's a $5 charge, but that includes your lunch, and you actually get to eat, so you sample uh, what you see us preparing. This smells, smells wonderful. Smells good, doesn't yeah. it? And you know, a marinade, you want it to be strongly flavored because you're imparting it, you're imparting that flavor to the uh, chicken. A little black pepper. Yep. You know, just recently I discovered cracked black pepper. You know, I've always used the coarse ground black pepper, and I had never seen, of course, immediately I always go tell Mandy everything I find on, on food. Pinch of salt, very yep. little salt. Yeah, and uh, so you were telling me that you, you, you knew about cracked pepper. Cra yeah, and that's actually, to me, it's, it has a little more flavor. Oh, uh, it, it, it's wonderful, I, isn't it? And, and the only bad I, thing about it is that you know, because it is cracked, it's not really fine or, yeah, or it, it's coarser you know, than yeah, coarse yeah. ground. You're gonna get it stuck between your teeth, or but the flavor is there. Now, what I want to do, Tim, okay. we're gonna save a little bit of that for, for our, our for our dressing, and we're gonna okay. actually marinate our chicken. So, here. if you don't mind. Right well, you can actually leave it on the bowl because what oh, we're going to oh, do is okay. we're going to use a Ziploc. We're going to pour a okay. little bit of that dressing here on the Ziploc. Oh, okay. Go ahead and I'm pour me you. half of that if you don't mind. All right. Let me let me have this right here. Okay, ready? Yeah. Just pour a little, uh, about half, maybe a little less than half. There you go. Zip we don't zip. need much, okay, because we're only going to marinate okay. a couple of chicken breasts. Okay. So we're going to put it here. Now i got my chicken breasts here in the refrigerator. What I want to do is that okay. we're going to, this is something nice. You could do it the, even the night before, you know? Okay. So we're or early in the morning, just get it, you know, put it, stick it in here. And, you know, poultry is one of those things that we always treat as though it were contaminated with salmonella. It's probably not, but we always treat it that well, way. Well, you have to. Yeah. And so uh, when you're done with this marinade, you toss it, okay, because it's, 
Yeah, yeah you don't want to save this. Yeah. That's why I say very little, because we're going to use some for the dressing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we don't want to throw away, right? No. 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 Because that dressing alone, if we have some left over, we can use it tomorrow. We can use it a couple of days from yeah. now. So that's what we want. But but so, this one we'll throw away. Yeah, after. this is what we're going to throw away. Yeah, yeah. So this is good, okay. you know. All right. Got nice season there. So I'm going to come in here. I got my hot pan ready to go. So we're just okay. going to go ahead and lay the chicken in there. Mm. You can tell it's sizzling nice it's and ready hot. ready, too. Yeah. All right. Let me throw this away, Tim. Okay. Let me go wash my hands real quick. You know, this is one of those dishes that's an all-in-one dish. And so you've got uh, a meat, uh, the starch is the pasta, a vegetable. We're going to lay it on a bed of spinach. Uh, and you've actually even got just a little bit of dairy with the feta cheese in there. So this is one of those dishes that's an all-in-one. Smell that, huh? Smells that's wonderful, wonderful, doesn't it? Yeah. A little balsamic, huh? Mm -hmm. So we're Beautiful. just going to go ahead and cook this. Now, the recipes, that's how simple that was. We're going to finish it off in the oven. Okay. All right. All right, so we're going to let it cook for just a little longer. And so basically you're going to brown sear it. it. Yeah. Just sear it down and then we'll finish it here in the oven. Okay? And the reason you're doing that is you want to make sure that you reach a good internal temp on this chicken. You just basically want it to be done. There again, you're treating poultry uh, uh, with uh, everything. Uh, food safety. You keep food safety you know, in mind. For us, it's poultry, it's hamburger meat. Why is it hamburger yeah. meat? Because it's ground meat and there's mm -hmm. a bunch of odds and ends that are grounded mm -hmm. together. So. so that's why we always have to be careful. We have to be careful with just about anything that we yep. put in our mouth. Yep. So, okay. Now that we have this, our okay. recipe is pretty simple, Tim. I got here. I have a little cooked linguine. Okay. Al dente, let me pour this fork right here, so we yep. can just. We have the dressing there. Why don't you go ahead and pour that if you don't mind? Dressing in here. Yeah, go okay. ahead and pour that because we're going to use that bowl to mix our stuff together. There you okay. go. Like I said, that's okay. perfect. Okay. So. And when I say al dente, I'm talking al dente, right? Look mm -hmm. at this, Tim. It's beautiful. Al nice dente. The dente means uh, to the bite. To the bite. So now, one thing firm. that we always have to remember, when we cook pasta, mm -hmm. you want to cook pasta, you want to boil the water, throw your pasta, stir constantly. A lot of people add oil to the water so mm -hmm. it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. Now, you can do both. One is that you could be, you know, throwing away money by adding oil to your water and this, that. Another thing that you could do it's just constantly stir. But once you feel that the pasta is cooked the way you want it, get it out of the water. Get it out of the water mm -hmm. and cool it down. Yes. All yes. right. You could always heat it back up when you're sautéing with a little pesto or anything. You know, like that. some people say run water over it. So you could you you could cool take, it down. You yeah. want to cool it down. Yeah. You take it out of the 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 pan, put it in a colander under the sink, running water on it. Now over. make sure you stir it. Yeah. Because. If you see the pasta here, and I'm just putting water in the center of the pasta, it will be it's still, still hot. hot. Still hot. So make sure you stir it, because you want to okay. cool it evenly. Okay. We got a little black olives. Yep, going to add just a few there. Just a few. Yep. You know, this dish is actually a dish that uh, we do. It's, it's a Sodexo recipe that we adapted for homes. Uh, a little feta, very yeah. little. We just want that flavor. And this recipe is available at Memorial, uh, at Cafe Memorial here at the hospital. We're actually going to run this recipe with a little bit of, uh, uh, once a week at least, once a week I want to try it, like, mm -hmm. I want people to enjoy it. Yeah, now, and, and I wanted to mention that in the recipe, this was an error that I didn't catch until the recipe went to, to press, <clears throat> it says that the cherry tomatoes are sliced. Well, actually they should be cut in half or quartered. Uh, and that, I mean, that, you, can, you, can sli you can slice them, but you know, but sometimes you the cherry to. tomatoes are so small so that small. you might, might roll off the yeah. table. Yeah. So, just quarter of them it comes out just as pretty okay now what we're gonna add is our fresh spinach did you know that spinach is one of those foods that I hits like spinach. The, it hits the top 10 list on in terms of uh, nutrient density and uh, uh, antioxidant content uh, flavonoids spinach is a very healthy food to eat. and that's good to know mm -hmm. okay you that's ready to take though, over right? here sure okay we'll do that the chicken is still cooking so I want to show the the audience are salad. You want a little bit of this on there? Yeah, we're going to toss this a little bit. Like I said, a little bit at a time, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't take, take much. much. You're really, and this is a mistake that a lot of Americans do these days. Uh, if, you, if you drench your salad in your dressing, then you don't taste your salad. You're just tasting the dressing. dressing. And so uh, it's not little just bit. A yeah. little bit of time. Yeah, and, and plus you don't want an oily salad. You know, you want it, you want it, it's, it's all about balance. And this isn't just from a health perspective, it's also from a, uh, a taste perspective. I want to make sure we mix it really, really good, Tim. Mm -hmm. 
Just want to get all nice, that good spinach in yes. there. Yes. We want to make it nice and colorfully. Yeah. So on this dish, you've got your guests, your, you, excuse me, you've, uh, you've put together your, your, uh, your dessert ahead of time, okay? And so it's, it's in the fridge and your guests arrive and maybe you have some champagne because it's a special occasion and then you make this salad in front of them. You know, everyone's gathered oh, around. Fun. Would that not be cool? That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, so then we get our chicken, which you, it might be hot, so we might want to cool it. Or, yep. like I said, if we're ready to eat, this yep. is the way we would do it. Okay. Put it there, and then we'll put the chicken on top. Okay. Okay? Right. Or we can cool the chicken down. Okay. But uh, let me grab my chicken it, here. Let me grab this. And it will be a little hot, so just be careful, okay? Okay. We'll just put it like this. We'll put it over it, okay, Tim? Beautiful. So that is Beautiful. a nice salad, isn't it? Mm hmm If you don't mind. Here. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. There Thank you. Go. Good. This thing is hot. Okay, so that'll be our salad. Ooh, that's beautiful. I think it's great. You know, a little nice chicken, a little balsamic, fresh herbs, garlic. Can't go wrong with that one. Okay, you think that uh, lemon pie is, is uh, ready? That lemon You've been pie. been chilling that pie in there. Ta -da. Look at there this. There it is. It's beautiful. Okay. Now, right. perfect. Okay. Nice. Now, we talked about decorating it. Yes. So we talked about... This is the fun part. We talked about um, using a fat-free... Yep, sugar-free, sugar fat-free uh, 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 Top, whip toppings. Whip toppings. And if you don't have a pastry bag, that's okay. Tell us how you, what you would do. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. Okay. The other one's the one we talked about in the, in the past show as yep. well. Yep, yep. Just use a Ziploc and... Cut the end. Yeah. So we put the cream here, close it up, cut the end, and just now use it as a pastry on that, bag. The trick on that is cut that end smaller than you really think it's going to be. Uh, I learned this from experience. Uh -oh. Oops. Uh oh. So this way, we're going to okay. go like this. So you're not just going to lather it on there. You're going to make it pretty. I'm going to make it pretty. Yeah. Why not? We've got a nice little entree there. You know, that's, the, that's kind of the neat thing of working with a chef. It's like working with an artist. You know, of course, the dietitians, you know, we're always interested in nutrients and, and antioxidants. But we can and, still make it look pretty, right? Yeah, and taste yeah. Good. Well, you know, isn't life all about uh, art? I mean, think about that. If we can make food our art, uh, you know, we, uh, we fuss about the French all the time. Uh, but, you know, those people really know about making uh, food art. They have art in their kitchen every day. Ooh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. just absolutely beautiful. There you go, Tim. And, you know, if you had... A, a, you know, I saved the omelet. I didn't forget, but I yeah. saved them for the, the end because I wanted to oh, okay. you know, just there top you it go. off. Do your nuts. Do your yeah. walnuts. If you want to yeah. toss it with it, that's great, but that also makes it look nice. And, you know, I, I just had an idea, too, that's not in the recipe, but if you had some dark chocolate, like some baker's chocolate, or you could even get, some, you know, you can get uh, dark chocolate uh, these days, just grate it and sprinkle a little on the top of that. Would that not beautiful. be beautiful? Well, we definitely want to thank our sponsors, uh, Brookshire Brothers, oh, a celebration of food and family. Uh, in fact, you can get all these ingredients at Brookshire's. And we also want to thank our friends at City of Lufkin who uh, taped this show and they distribute it to cities all across Texas. And uh, Chef Mandy, I want to thank you because we've learned some interesting well, things I hope, on this I, show. I hope everybody learned about keeping a knife sharp, yeah. which is really good. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I hope everybody enjoys making some, making cooking fun. Well, and, and we, another thing, a cooking tip we learned today was using the cornstarch as a thickener, uh, creating a thicker sauce to make a pie filling. And so, uh, you know, when I eat food like this, I don't feel like I'm giving up anything for healthy eating. So why did it take us so long to learn that healthy eating can taste so delicious? You know, it's it's a matter of just trying fresh herbs, fresh ingredients, maybe even we, frozen. Well, maybe we just weren't talking to the right people. You know, when you get a chef and a dietitian together, you start creating some some beautiful and delicious foods. And so, Chef Manny, uh, we're gonna uh, ask you to come back next month and all show right. us some more. Uh, we'll do something fun. Art and and you all, we want to see you next month too. Thank you for joining us on Memorial Cooking Innovations.